Hi, welcome back to my channel and my review from Scanners from 1981. So back again with another Cronenberg movie. I loved The Fly so much that I decided to go back and check out even more of his work. And I knew that this was another pretty renowned movie that he did back in the 80s. So the story in Scanners here is... It's a sci-fi horror film and it's about this world in which there's a small group of people called scanners who have these kind of telepathic abilities, they have these psychic powers and there is a theory that a group of these people are planning to wage war against ordinary humans. So you have this scientist character who's been holding one of these scanners and he basically gets him to infiltrate this smaller group of scanners and try and stop them from causing this conflict. So it's definitely an interesting premise and going into this review I'll say that I definitely did enjoy the film. I think it's really well done and there's a lot of really great things about it. But when I compare this to The Fly, I don't think it's anywhere near as good. The Fly was a movie that was just paced so well. It had great characters, great actors. Everything about it just came together and flowed so nicely. Whereas here, I think... There's a load of really great aspects to it and great things within this story, but there's enough problems that really hold it back from being what I would say is a great movie. But getting into the good things here, I think the opening act is pretty memorable. And when you get that first iconic head explosion scene, I had no idea that this was from Scanners. I realised I'd seen this scene a number of times before. I'm not sure if it was off other YouTube videos or whether it was off a horror documentary or what it was. But <laughs> the second I saw that scene, I was like, no way, that's from Scanners. I had no idea. Uh, and it's a pretty insane sequence, uh, seeing that there's incredible, gnarly David Cronenberg effects uh, there to cringe you and, uh, and make you squirm in your seat. It works extremely well. Uh, so I think that's a great start for the movie, and I do think it's quite an interesting concept. It's quite unique when you think about the implication of what these scanners are doing, what this could mean for humanity, you know, if this existed in the world. There's certain parallels you can draw between other things going on in the world, which I did think was in explored in a relatively interesting way here. I do think, though, the movie is let down by the cast here, with the exception being Michael Ironside, who is playing this main villain. He is like the, the main scanner who runs this group of rebellious uh, telepathic people, and he is fantastic. He just I've seen him in a number of movies before, but he just has a real presence about him. He's got something about the tone of his voice and the way he looks at people when he's speaking. Uh, it just draws you in. You want to hear what he's got to say. He's quite intimidating and he's just got so much intrigue about him. He's just one of those actors you want to watch and he plays a really great villain. So with him aside, again, because I want to say that he is fantastic, but uh, other than that, I thought the acting performances and also the characters, the, the writing for the characters themselves weren't particularly good, mainly with the main character of Cameron Vale. And I think there's something quite wooden about the performance from this actor here that just... It, it made it so that the first half of the movie was a little bit of a chore to go along with because I think that the story is a little bit plodding to begin with. After you have this explosive opening sequence, you have a little bit of a plodding story where this guy has been with this scientist. He's going out and starting to meet different people in order to try and find this Michael Ironside character. And because he's not very engaging and a little bit wooden in his dynamic with other people, it's just... It was a little bit hard to follow and I kept finding myself sort of checking out and thinking about other things. So that was a little bit frustrating for me. I do think there was a few confusing moments within the story as well that weren't very clearly explained or just the way they were executed here didn't entirely work where there's a few moments of conflict where there's like almost like action sequences that I don't think were needed personally. They felt a little bit out of place in spots I thought and when you have this group of characters that are um, turning up in order to try and seemingly assassinate this main character of Cameron, the scanner, uh, they come to try and kill him and it's not really clear when they've been sent, who they've been sent by, by, why they know that he's in certain places at certain times. There's little things and details like that that are just 
left out here which do leave you a little bit confused at times if you think too much about it and again there were a few reveals at the end as well which i won't spoil here just in case you haven't seen the movie but there's a few reveals in which uh, some of the details were going over my head <laughs> and I, I don't know whether it was just the fact that I checked out for a few moments and missed a crucial bit of dialogue I'm not sure but I think when you get into some of the big reveals because some of the uh, the direction the story goes in and what turns out to be going on is quite complicated and it really is quite interesting as I'm going to get into the second half of the movie I thought was a lot more engaging and I was like oh that really got me thinking afterwards about the direction it went in but I just think when it starts to reveal certain things it's not done in a particularly clear way. I do think the movie picks up massively in the second half though and as this main character of Cameron is starting to get closer to the truth about what's really going on and you know at some point he's going to come face to face with the Michael Ironside character and I just thought the whole exchange between those two was really interesting. I actually watched the scene through a couple of times just to fully take in everything that we were saying to each other but it was all of that stuff that really got me thinking afterwards and really had me intrigued about this story and I thought some of the reveals were really quite cool and really got me engaged back in the film again and again when you do get to that final conflict and you have that absolutely wild final 15-20 minutes of the movie where it's full David Cronenberg on show with his kind of gruesome body horror uh, and all of that stuff it's like it's almost so gruesome to watch you know especially when you have those scenes where people's like veins are rising to the surface and they're spraying blood and it's like it's it's so cringeworthy you almost can't watch it but you also don't want to take your eyes off the screen because it's just so insane to look at so I really loved all of that stuff and as I said as well in that final conflict those final moments Michael Ironside is just amazing to watch on screen and really has a presence about him which made that final act of the film just so engaging to watch so I do think overall despite its problems it's one of those movies where the good bits about it are really good and they bring it way up for me. So it's still a film that I was interested in, I've been thinking about since I saw it and I'm interested to talk about it as well. So I think when you look into it closely and analyse it, there are problems with it. If they'd had a more interesting and more charismatic lead actor, I think that's what would have really made it a quite a special film and really would have taken it up to that next level. So I'm only going to give this one a three and a half out of five but I did definitely enjoy the movie and I do think it's one that if you're interested in David Cronenberg and some of his old horror movies this is definitely one that you should check out. So that's my review for Scanners. If you've seen the movie as always please do come and join me in the comments and let me know what you think about the movie. Also please do consider subscribing to the channel if you've been enjoying my content. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.